See, the hip feel is was one of the more ir it, it, one of the, one of the conjugations that has significant problems with quote irregular verbs. What what's going to happen in the uh, in the hollows? Okay. This is about as this this one's going to be bad. I'm warning you. Question. Quick question on last one: Is the participle going to be mo? Right. Right. Right, you know everything you need to know now. You can figure out the participle and the infinitives simply by analogy to the regular verb. Does that make sense, what he's asking? All right, if the participle of the regular verb is maktil, then that same, it's going to become mo shiv, mo. All right, you can kind of work through that. I want to look at the hollows now. Our paradigm for hollows, remember, was kum. Kum, root kum. Now, in the cow, what happened to the hollows in the cow perfect? In the cow perfect is precisely, this is the first form we learned of the hollows. This is where hollows are, in fact, hollow. You lose the mater letter, right? Well, in the hyphial perfect, the same thing happens. Hollows are still hollow. That is to say that the third singular masculine of cum is going to be just com, no mater letter. All right? Now, let's make it hip feel, however. This is just the root now without the infix, without the mater letter, um, the mater letter here. How are we going to make it hip feel? Well, one thing we're going to do is Add a hay to it, right? Another thing we're going to do is put the infix in there between the two consonants. There you go. Now it's hip feel. That wasn't all that hard. The only tricky thing now is what to do with this vowel. <coughs> what would you like to put there? In the hip feel, perfect. You want to put a herrick there, right? You, you want to put a herrick there. Right? In other words, the analogy to the regular verb in this form is hick teal. Right? Hick teal. Why can't you put a herrick there? Well, you sort of want to, but what's the problem? It's a short vowel, and do you understand what we're short a consonant here? See? In the regular verb, in the regular verb, we had three root letters. So we could do this, still have our infix, and we had a consonant here that we could put a schwa under. See? We don't have that luxury. This is kind of stuck as an open syllable. Hey, you know what to do. When, you have, when you're stuck with a short vowel and an open syllable due to circumstances beyond your control, what do you do? Short vowels lengthen. And in this sense, in this case, or in most cases, it's going to lengthen within its vowel family. So the short I vowel is going to lengthen too. You can predict this. What? Saray. There you go. There's your hip field. Again, you see this form, and you're kind of going, I don't know what it is. But if you see, figure out what's happened, it makes sense. It makes perfectly good sense. So what would the third singular feminine be? Well, what's the regular verb here? You take, you still have the infix, so it'd be hic t la. You just take this form, right? And you add, comma, it's hey. Hey, kima. Got it? That makes sense. Hey, kima. What about the second singular masculine now? What happens here? Here's where you lose the infix and it just becomes com, and now you're ending ta t t or ta ta t tem ten nu. The rest of them are the same. Okay. The accent stays there, so there's that first syllable is still open. And it's left as a saray. Hey, comta. Hey, comte. Hey, comte. All right? That actually makes sense. Now, here's the next footnote. 
for some strange reason, when you get to these forms that have the consonantal suffixes, which are the six forms of the second person and first person, there is an alternate form in the hip field. <coughs> All right? And look what happens in this alternate form. I think it's in the book. The nice thing about the alternate form is that the infix comes back. But the odd thing about the alternate form is that we're adding what I call a helping holum for no apparent reason other than to add an extra syllable and a vowel in there. Then we have the suffix ta. Okay? If the truth be told, David, I don't know if, if you can document this for me, but my guess is that this form is actually statistically more common than this form. They both occur, but these are very common uh, forms of the hip fields uh, with these hollow roots. And the helping holum is sort of a blessing and a curse, all right? It's a blessing because there's no reason for that holum to be there. There's no rule. I'm sorry, that would be the curse. Huh? The bad news is that there's no reason for it to be there. It doesn't help you in any way. It actually confuses you. But the blessing side of it is that these forms bring the infix back, even where ordinarily you wouldn't have it. And the minute you see that infix, the form screams hefeel at you, right? Now, the final thing, and this is probably more a curse than a blessing, the helping holum adds a syllable and pulls the accent over one toward the end. So instead of hey kam ta, it's heki mo tha. Well, guess what's going to happen now? This is your tonic. This is your pretonic. This is your propretonic syllable. And you're going to lose that nice IE vowel for a composite schwa since we're reducing to schwa in the propretonic. Why it goes to a pathoc here and not an e vowel is simply due to the fact that gutturals prefer a vowels when they have a choice and you're losing the dominant power of the e vowel of the hip field. The fact of the matter is there's your alternate form. Hekimotha. It's got a nice lilt to it. Heki Motha. You still see your ending? You see an hefeel prefix, or at least a he at the beginning. You see a root with an infix, and you see a helping holum. Right? These are kind of odd forms. Remember this. Hollows in the hefeel can have a helping holum. Repeat after me. Hollows in the hip field can have a helping holum. Any questions so far? Imperfect. Hollows in the hip field can have a helping home. Somehow I feel better about life already. How do we make this an imperfect? Well, what happened in the cow? In the 